I want to show you how I light my smoker. I get a lot of questions around why bees are so defensive or aggressive. A lot of people say to me, I don't know how you manage to work in the brood chambers. The bees fight them too much. They're very aggressive or very defensive. And over the phone I ask certain questions and I try and find out, you know, are you smoking your bees enough? You must remember our African honeybee, Scutellata, Apis mellifera Scutellata, is a very defensive bee by nature. That's why we kit up the way we do. We can't afford to take chances. And our only defense against them is a well-lit smoker. And for that reason, I started noticing speaking to beekeepers that are struggling with controlling their bees when they're working them that you know i'll speak to them on the phone and i'll ask them well are you smoking them and how are you smoking them and it, it all sounds right until somebody pointed out to me the one day that the volume of smoke i'm using and i think that's something very important to maybe demonstrate and just to to get across so let me get into it. I'll show you how I light my smoker. I'll show you what I'm looking for. When it comes to material, what I use for the smoker, I'm a firm believer of pine needles. It's what I've grown up using. And we have them fairly readily available. We've got uh, a backyard where we've got a lot of pine trees. So we gather up our own uh, fuel for the smokers. So it's just a personal preference. It's not a must. When I get into lighting the smoker now, I'll show you what the important and the real most important um, aspects are to lighting a smoker. And you can use whatever fuel you find gives you this quality smoke. So let's get into it. It's quite a strong wind as well today, so I'm just being careful. Where I light my smoker, you can see behind me I've got dry grass. So I work on the tailgate of the of the truck. I make sure that I don't start a fire, otherwise I'm not going to be very popular with the landowner. I started out just by lighting it, and I light it with um, pine needles facing down inside my smoker, just to make sure that I, again, I don't have a, a raging flame outside my smoker. What you want to see, you've got flames at the bottom, I just start to puff it lightly to keep it burning. And you see this thick white smoke that's coming out, the wind's blowing it a lot. That's what I'm aiming for. You can hear that it's flaming inside there, that's what I want. Flames are almost reaching the top, so I put a little bit more in on the top and I just keep giving it oxygen from the bottom. It keeps it burning, I can hear the flames burning at the bottom there. Give me that thick volume of smoke that I'm looking for. Just keep adding, but I keep giving it oxygen from the bottom. I want it to burn very well from the bottom. You can see how I'm getting less, so I'm going to make sure I keep pumping it to give it oxygen from the bottom to get it burning nicely. There it comes again. Now I know it's lit up again very well. Change the angle there slightly so you can see it a little bit better. The wind is blowing all the smoke away. That to me is lit well. Do you see the thick white smoke coming out? So let's get my lid on it. And this is a cold smoke. You see the volume of smoke that comes through my hand and it's not burning my hand. That's the most important thing. So you want a cool, white, thick smoke that comes out of your smoker. That's what you want in. You want that nice thick bellows of smoke. So again, that's what you want. You want nice thick bellows of white smoke. This is the quality smoke that you want. Just a trick I've learned, I don't put my veil on until I've lit my smoker because otherwise you burn a hole in it if you're not careful. When you're lighting that smoker, sometimes the flames blow up through the smoker. And I've burned holes in veils in the past, so lesson learnt.
But let's get kitted and let's get into the bees. That's what we're here for.